Hello. Some time ago, the members of the Royal Squad team released a gem named Credis. And now, whenever you create a new Ruben Rails 7 application, uh, the gem Credis is recommended in the gem file of a newly created application. And also, you see, Redis is already installed by default in a new Rails 7 application. Now, it says that we need Redis to be able to run Action Cable. And if we need it for Action Cable, we also need it for Hotwire Rails to run uh, to the stream broadcasts via WebSockets. Also, we would often use Redis. Uh, for background job processing. For example, whenever we use uh, Sidekick for background jobs, we would also need Redis. So we've already got Redis by default in a Rails application and there is Credis. Let's have a quick look at what Credis uh, is. It is basically an easy, a very easy way to uh, store data in Redis, retrieve data and uh, uh, display data. Like uh, all Rails applications have a relational database like PostgreSQL or MySQL. And there is uh, another way of storing data like in non-relational databases. And Credis is an adapter to easily access Redis. So let's try installing Credis and see how uh, we can use it. So yeah, I will just uncomment the gem Credis. I will run bundle on my newly created Ruben Rails application and I will uh, also run this command bin rails credits install and this command will create uh, a folder config credits and inside a file shared via ml and this is just like some redis config we don't need to update anything here i can now start the rails uh, console and try accessing redis from our rails console so for example we can uh, get uh, like create a counter or a list like there are different data types in credits in redis and we can access them via credits so let's create like a list equals credits dot list and we need to give it some kind of name like list one whatever and we have a list object we can get the elements and there are no elements so a redis list is basically like a ruby array let's try adding something like i will add the uh, yarrow and we go to list elements we have yarrow i will try adding uh, rails i have yarrow and rails i will add rails once again i have yarrow rails and rails let's try creating not a list but a unique list so that uh, if we try to add uh, an element a second time to this uh, unique list it will not be added let's say unique list equals credits dot unique list uh, we will name it like you list one whatever and let's say you list add the uh, yarrow you list dot elements we have this we add the same element once again and you see we still have uh, just one element i will try to add an element with a different uh, content and you see we have two so i try to add the uh, records that don't uh, pass the uniqueness validation and they are not added. So we've uh, tried like unique list, we've tried list, both cases are kind of arrays. And let's try, for example, uh, uh, counters. Let's say counter equals credits.counter. And let's say counter dot uh, value. And it is zero. It's like an integer that can be incremented or decremented. Let's say counter dot increment. I will get counter value. I will increment once again. The value is two. Okay, so we've played a tiny bit with the credits from our Rails console. Let's try doing something in our Ruben Rails application. And let's actually create uh, a counter that we can increment or decrement uh, in Rails. So I will start by creating a new view because here I've just got a blank application. You see there's like nothing here. So I will say rails generate controller home index. Oh no, let's actually name the controller counter and get a show view. I will start the server. And here we have, so get counter show, go into our co controller, counter controller, we have counter show. Let's uh, navigate to our application and go to slash counter. Uh, yeah, I will change the root to be get uh, counter to counter show. So now slash counter works. Okay, 
and let's uh, display some kind of number here. So I will go to uh, our view and here we want to display some kind of number and you see we will try storing this number and uh, displaying it from credits. We will not create a migration, we are not going to add anything to our relational uh, database we are just going to get and update values in our credits database in our redis database that we already have uh, in the background so uh, here i would say at uh, counter equals credits dot counter and i can name it whatever like my counter let's try to display this counter equals at counter and let's display the uh, value dot value uh, so here it is, the value is zero at the moment. Let's uh, increment it. Let's add a link to increment the counter or a button. Let's say button to uh, plus, for example, and the path is going to be increment path. And let's uh, create a new, uh, a new uh, path. So I'll make a post increment to counter increment i will add this increment action uh, here so def increment we're going to find the same counter and we're going to increment it so i will say counter dot increment and uh, let's see if uh, this works so uh, i'll go back here i will click on plus and I go to the console, so something might have happened. I will refresh the page and something did happen. You see, the number is already one. And uh, I will click once again, and you see the count has been incremented in uh, Redis a few more times. Okay, so this seems to be working. Uh, the same way we can uh, potentially make a decrement path to like decrease the number. So let's have a plus and a minus with the decrement I will also add a def decrement uh, go with this and uh, yeah I need to also update the roots so we've got an action to increment and we will have an action to decrement and this might work so we have our counter we've got a plus and a minus let's see if it works in the console i click minus you see we have decremented i refresh the page and the number is three okay let's just make it a tiny bit more dynamic by using turbo streams as responses and let's also clean this up a bit so let's say before action uh, set counter then i'll make a private method def uh, set counter or actually I can just say uh, yeah counter and I will uh, get the counter here I will memoize it and uh, I don't need to get the counter in each of the methods separately so in show we will have the counter accessible we will have uh, increment decrement and for increment and decrement we will uh, also uh, make a tubo stream response so I will make respond to do format format dot turbo stream do then I will make turbo stream dot uh, update we are going to update some kind of div that contains the counter value so I will create a div div id uh, counter for example okay so uh, I'm going to update the counter div with uh, the value of the counter dot value so html uh, counter dot value actually here i've already memorized it like this so i don't need this at i guess let's uh, see if this works so i added the turbo stream up response only for increment let's see if it works I click on plus and no it doesn't seem to have worked um, 
why not? Let me try clicking once again. Okay, starting post, processing controller. So it rendered, uh, okay, no template found. Maybe I forgot something. Yeah, I forgot render. Render turbo stream. And here we should have turbo stream update. Maybe like this will work. So I will uh, click once again. And you see this time it worked and it uh, sent the update. So seems to be going fine for the plus. Now we'll make it also work for the minus. You see we are going to have like the same thing for the minus. So we will make a def uh, stream counter and go with this all here. And we will just have this stream counter after we increment or decrement. Let's see if it works. So I have plus and I have minus. And you see this information is stored between requests. It is stored between uh, browser sessions. So like uh, all the users uh, that uh, are using the application will have uh, access to, to this data. And you see each time we will make like uh, uh, an increment or decrement, uh, it is uh, stored and it is updated. But let's uh, see to it that it also gets uh, updated with web sockets. So if we have, for example, two browser windows, let me just go to this one. If we have two browser windows and in one of them we have uh, the counter updated, we also want to have it updated in the other one. So to do this, instead of doing the HTTP turbo streams, we will do the ones that work with the uh, uh, web sockets, so the broadcast ones. And to do this, I will add a turbo stream from, so equals turbo stream from. I will add some kind of ID like uh, counter stream, whatever. And uh, inside the counter controller, I will uh, not get this stream counter. Instead, I will uh, send a turbo stream broadcast via web sockets. So I will say turbo streams channel uh, is it yeah it is streams channel dot broadcast update to all the subscribers of this uh, channel so everybody who has this line in one of the HTMLs of their pages open and then we're going to have a target and target is going to be uh, this uh, div so counter and the HTML will be the counter dot uh, value that we're going to update okay let's see if uh, this would work so I will add this in both cases and let's see so I will try to update in one of the browser windows and I hope it will also be automatically updated in the other. So I increase here. And does it work? No, no. It seemed to have... Oh yeah, now it does. I had to refresh both windows to establish the connection initially. But now you see whenever I update the number in one of the windows, it is also updated in the other window. And all this data is stored in credits. Let's see. I will stop the server. I restart the server. And it's still available. So this is one of the simple use cases of uh, Credis. I hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed uh, doing both uh, the updates via HTTP turbo streams and uh, WebSocket turbo streams. So have a nice one and see you in the next video.